All right. Uh, good evening and welcome. Uh, we're going to tell you a little story about uh, CI, CD, and uh, how it's done uh, in OpenStack, and also how you can do it at home with a software factory. So Fabien and I are going to tell you about uh, software factories, a project we've been working on for about uh, a year at uh, Red Hat. We are, so the, uh, we are senior uh, engineers uh, at uh, Red Hat. The rest of the team is uh, scattered in the, uh, around here. There are a few faces uh, we can introduce you to uh, by the end of the, of the talk. So let's start with a quick state of the art of uh, CI and CD, how it's done uh, as an industry standard. It's a pretty old problem, so there are pretty much uh, tried and true uh, methods to do that. Typically, the, the workflow you're going to implement if you're doing uh, uh, continuous integration and continuous development is uh, one similar to this one. So basically, uh, when a developer uh, submits a patch to the code base, to the version control system, this event is going to be cocked uh, by uh, uh, the, the CI uh, infrastructure. It's going to trigger uh, a round of testing, and uh, this testing is going to give back uh, feedback to the developers. If the, dev if the feedback is negative, then the developers know that there's a problem with the current version of the code base, and they have to fix it as soon as possible. If it's positive, then it's going to progress further down the integration pipeline until uh, uh, QA tests and eventually the release for uh, a continuous delivery. So this is tried and true, this works, but this has some problems. There are some problems uh, with, well, with the enterprise of uh, doing uh, continuous integration. First, there's a cost to automation. Automating a build and automating tests is not an easy task, depending on the project. And also, there's a cost in terms of a dedicated CI infrastructure. Of course, you need uh, a CI uh, server to monitor your uh, uh, content version system. Also, you will need, uh, most of the time, a build uh, server, something that will build your, uh, your code. You will need uh, a test testing infrastructure, testing uh, nodes for that. Uh, most of the time, you will want to do your tests on an architecture that will mimic as, much as, uh, uh, as accurately as possible your production uh, infrastructure, which might have a cost. Also, you have to maintain all that, so it has a cost in a, a human cost as well. And finally, and uh, more importantly, there are some flaws in the workflow itself. Uh, for instance, uh, commits in rapid succession uh, will uh, make your CI test obsolete as they run because uh, the CI is not running on the latest version of the master, meaning that your tests, uh, the test results are not really uh, uh, relevant anymore. And the, the, the biggest problem with, uh, with this workflow is that actually you can end up with a broken master temporarily and you might not even knowing, uh, know it because uh, between the moment when you, uh, you submit uh, a new patch to your code base and the moment you get the feedback from your test, there might be some time, uh, it might take some time to run the test. So in this, uh, in this interval of time, you don't know uh, for sure the state of your master. That means that people who check out uh, your code base at this moment might actually be working on a flawed version, on a broken version, and not know it. So in a large scale um, uh, projects like, open, uh, like OpenStack, this, uh, this, uh, this workflow doesn't scale. It's uh, really not uh, possible to work li that, uh, like that. To give you an idea and uh, to refresh your memory, uh, this, these are ball uh, ballpark estimations uh, for the project, but basically they, they remain true even if they are not accurate. Uh, OpenStack uh, represents uh, about uh, 43 uh, projects each of those projects have their own subsets of uh, deliverables, and all of those de deliverables are uh, strongly tied together in deployment and in testing. This means that if uh, one of the masters for this project uh, is uh, broken, then all of the other projects are going to suffer uh, about that. They're going to be impacted by that. So it's not, po it's not possible to, have, uh, to use a workflow like that that allows for a broken master temporarily. Also, you have more than uh, 2,000 contributors, at least for this, light, uh, this last uh, release cycle. This means that uh, you can't expect all of those contributors first to be able to test in uh, correct conditions uh, their patches. They're, I mean, they're, they're not going necessarily to have the infrastructure to test them, uh, to test the cloud. And also, you can't uh, be sure that all of them are going to abide by uh, uh, code, quality uh, code quality standards and uh, things like that. So you, you can't trust a direct commit to your, uh, to your code base by your contributors that you don't know. And uh, finally, uh, the, the most impressive number uh, concerning OpenStack is the sheer amount of uh, patches 
that you get for, uh, for, a, re for a, a development cycle. Uh, it amounts to about uh, 400 patches a day. Uh, each of those patches uh, can trigger up to uh, 25 jobs, and some of these jobs can take more than 30 minutes to execute. So you really have to have a, a CI infrastructure that is able to parallelize those tests and also to absorb uh, the sheer amount of, uh, of data that it represents. So OpenStack still needs to do CI, obviously. So uh, they came up with a new way to do it, a new workflow that we're going to introduce now. So the OpenStack way is a little bit different from the old way. Uh, the main difference is that uh, it uh, relies on a, on a scoring system. So there's a new uh, element that is introduced, which is a code review part. That means that instead of uh, submitting code directly to the version control system, a submitter will first um, submit the code to the code review system. The code review system will need um, a score, a given score, to uh, make the patch progress further down the, uh, the integration pipeline. Uh, this score uh, consists of two elements. First, uh, a, co uh, sorry, um, a value given by uh, feedback from the check tests uh, pipeline, which, uh, which are tests that are run as soon as a patch is submitted or uh, modified. And there's another part of the score that is given by uh, what we call core developers, which are developers that uh, have uh, uh, special rights on the project. They are uh, usually experienced developers who are able to, um, uh, to make a patch progress and uh, uh, merge, merge a patch in the version control. If uh, those uh, two elements are met, that is a positive uh, feedback from the check tests and a positive uh, approval from the core devs, then the, the patch is finally tested in uh, the gate tests, uh, uh, the series of gate tests, which are uh, the last uh, kind of tests against the latest version of the master of the code. This means that uh, you, you are sure that uh, if uh, other uh, patches have been integrated uh, in the meantime, uh, this patch is not going to break it. It's going to be tested, uh, uh, making sure that uh, your tests are never obsolete. And after that, if uh, you get a positive feedback from the gate tests, uh, you uh, finally integrate the patch. In order to implement this workflow, uh, the OpenStack infrastructure consists uh, in, uh, in this. Well, it's a simplified view of the infrastructure, but uh, it focuses on the, the services that uh, actually implement uh, the CI. So uh, the noteworthy uh, services are Garrett, which is the name of the code review system. If you are a, a contributor to OpenStack, you are very familiar with this one. Uh, then uh, the, the pipeline, uh, the, the integration pipeline management is done by Zool. And Zool communicates with Jenkins to start uh, uh, jobs, jobs that are going to be run on slave nodes that are managed by NodePool. NodePool is a service that uh, spins up VMs, destroys them uh, when, uh, when they're not needed anymore. So this, um, uh, this, uh, this workflow and this infrastructure uh, has some drawbacks because it's, uh, it brings a longer workflow and extra workload on the core developers, but the, the advantages are really worth, uh, worth it because we, uh, we address all the problems that we listed before. Uh, the, the main advantage is that this time you guarantee that the master version is always okay, well, um, uh, according to your test, of course, according to what you test, but your master ver the master version of your code is always okay. You never have uh, the possibility to have a, a broken master. And also, uh, thanks to NodePool, since uh, the test uh, slaves are launched only when you need them, only on demand, your infrastructure, your infrastructure costs are reduced, and also Zool, uh, by uh, gating commits, ensures that the tests are never obsolete. And the best part of it is that everything uh, is uh, freely available, and you have also all the recipes to deploy it by, uh, uh, that are uh, freely available on the repository of OpenStack. So that's pretty cool. You're probably thinking, wow, that's, uh, that sounds uh, pretty nice. I'd like to have uh, the same system uh, for me. How can I do that? Well, you can. The thing is that uh, the only problem is that the recipes from OpenStack are very custom tailored to, uh, to, to their own infrastructure. So it's going to take a lot of work to actually adapt it to your own needs. Yes, thank you. And uh, actually, it might be even faster to start from scratch. So that's, that's a bit disappointing. And you're probably thinking now, well, I wish somebody would do it for me. 
and which is good because we did. And that's called Software Factory. And Fabien will tell you more about the main features of, the, of Software Factory. Uh, so thank you, Mathieu. So um, Software Factory is a all-in-one CI-CD system uh, that implements a workflow similar to the one used uh, by the OpenStack community. It uses uh, the same tools that are deployed by the infrastructure team of OpenStack. And, um, uh, and uh, we are going to talk uh, about it. So we are going to introduce Software Factory uh, by making an overview of uh, each component included in it. We are also uh, going to show you how it is easy to uh, deploy it. And uh, finally, um, we are going to show you how we manage component configuration uh, in Software Factory. So here is a global architecture of, uh, of Software Factory. Uh, so uh, all the components you can see in this diagram, except the slave node, uh, node on the right, can be run uh, on, um, on, the same, uh, on the same node. These are services. And in fact, Software Factory is a platform uh, that is designed to be run on a single virtual machine. Uh, so, um, uh, first, we, have, uh, we include five main components in Software Factory. So gear, it, gear it to host project and uh, perform code review. Uh, Git web uh, to allow an easy browsing of code repository. And uh, Jenkins uh, as a job manager. We also uh, include um, two other tools that has been created by the OpenSAP community. Uh, Zool uh, as a job scheduler to enforce the CI-CD pipeline and Notbool to, um, to start virtual machine as a test environment on uh, an OpenStack cloud. So as you know, uh, Gerrit is a nice tool to host repository and perform code review, but it can be a bit complicated to uh, configure it and, uh, and adapt it to the OpenStack workflow. So that's why in uh, Software Factory, uh, Gerrit comes pre-configured uh, with a review label and access control list. So we define uh, by default uh, three review labels to receive scoring from a core reviewer, the CI system, Zool and Jenkins, and a patch submitter. We also define a pre-configured ACL uh, to enforce a workflow uh, around the scoring. It's a workflow similar to the one used by the OpenStack community. And um, we also uh, wrote hook to tie Gerrit uh, with Redmine. So for instance, when a patch submitter um, create a patches and uh, um, include a link uh, to a ticket uh, on a commit message. Uh, automatically, Gerrit will uh, mark a ticket as uh, in progress when a patch is first submitted. And automatically, also, Gerrit will close a ticket uh, when a patch is merged. So, as said before, we also install Zool uh, in Software Factory. Uh, so Zool come uh, pre-configured in Software Factory, uh, standing between uh, Gerrit and Jenkins. Uh, and Zool uh, will be responsible of the LC state of uh, project hosted uh, in uh, Gerrit. Uh, we define uh, five pipelines by, by default, and the two of them uh, are worth mentioning for performing continuous integration. Uh, the first one is a check pipeline that defines the job uh, that must be run uh, when a patch is uh, first submitted or modified. And the gate pipeline that defines the job that must be run uh, prior, prior to the merge of uh, approved patch. And uh, it is worth mentioning that uh, Zool is really smart uh, in this pipeline, the gate pipeline, because uh, it will always rebase a patch against the master before performing jobs. And this avoids the phenomenon of broken master. Uh, Mathieu, Mathieu talked about it um, before. And uh, also, gate, uh, in the gate pipeline, Zool uh, will uh, be smart enough to, uh, to speculate about uh, uh, job result in order to run a job in parallel. And we also uh, define by default three pipelines that are uh, more designed for uh, continuous deployment. So first, the post pipeline uh, that defines the job that must be run uh, when patch are merged. The tag pipeline that defines the job that must be run 
when a tag is pushed uh, on a project code base and the periodic pipelines that define the jobs that must be run on a daily basis. Uh, but this kind of job that will run in this pipeline, in those pipeline, um, uh, uh, with those pipeline, you can do stuff like uh, I want to push the last version of uh, my project on a production server, or I want to push uh, the last version of my project on a remote repository like PyPy. But uh, in order to do that, uh, this kind of job uh, may need. Uh, uh, specific credential to access privileged places. So that's why in Software Factory we include uh, a specific Jenkins plugin to allow a user to store credential and reuse credential during jobs. About the slave node. Um, so uh, this is often difficult to manage slave node to perform CI and sometimes uh, slave node uh, are the bottleneck to uh, perform an efficient CI. So in Software Factory, if we define two ways to uh, install slave, to define slave. So the classic way uh, with the Jenkins is to define static slave, long running slave. And we also include a uh, node pool. So you can uh, configure your slave via node pool in Software Factory. Uh, using node pool, you can have a dynamic pool of slave, as, uh, of virtual machine as slave on an OpenStack cloud. And it is worth mentioning that uh, in Software Factory, we pre-configure node pool for you. So all you have to do is to uh, specify your cloud provider credential in the Software Factory configuration file, and uh, and that's it. And uh, it is also worth mentioning about uh, the benefits of node pool. So First, the job scalability, you can run as many jobs as you can run virtual machine on your cloud provider. Uh, also, node pool is really smart about resource usage. So um, it will only uh, start a virtual machine as a slave only when needed, when a job needs to be launched, and only for the duration of the job. So this is really important because it, it allows you to save a lot cost on your cloud provider. And also, uh, node pool uh, will only uh, start a virtual machine the way you define it, using the base image you define, using the provision script you define. So, thanks to that, all your jobs uh, are guaranteed to run on, a, on the same well-known environment. And um, uh, from our experiences, uh, we used to use static slave to test software factory. And uh, we had a lot of trouble with them. Uh, sometimes slaves are not... Uh, consistent and raise a false negative as test result. And since we use node pool, uh, all our tests are really uh, stable. So this is really, really great improvement to use node pool. And in addition to the core, we also include collaborative tools uh, to, um, to help soft software development teams. So first, Etherpad, uh, collaborative text editor, really useful uh, during um, during a meeting or brainstorming session. Uh, Pasty, um, a rapid copy pasting system. And uh, Renmine um, as uh, an issue tracker and a backlog manager. And in order to integrate uh, all these components well together, smoothly together, uh, we created additional uh, components uh, like ManageSF, that, um, that is a REST API, a CLI on a dashboard that allow a user of Software Factory to easily create and delete projects on Software Factory, to easily manage project memberships, and also do things like configure Git replication for its project. And it is worth mentioning that uh, ManageSF uh, will propagate project operation on um, Git and Renmine transparently for the user. We also created CIOT, uh, that is uh, a SSO system, uh, that unifies the authentication across all components uh, on Software Factory. And finally, we uh, integrate a top menu on the Software Factory UI uh, that allows a user of Software Factory to easily access each component included in Software Factory by one click. And uh, you may say, okay, that's fine. Um, that maybe this is complicated to install this Software Factory. And uh, I will say, no, not, not at all. This is really easy because you just have to spawn a virtual machine using the base ima the image we create uh, for you and um, uh, adapt the configuration file uh, to your needs, then run the configuration script. And here we go, you are ready to host project, 
run CI/CD jumps uh, à la OpenStack. And it is worth mentioning that we also created a, a hit template to ease more against this, um, this, uh, this step. And finally, about the component included in Software Factory, uh, we create by default uh, a project um, that is in fact a repository, so config repository. And the purpose of this config repository is to host uh, job configuration, test description, uh, and uh, so thanks to that, users in Software Factory are able to provide via patches on Gerit Um, configura job configuration and test environment configuration for their project uh, on Gerit. And thanks to that, uh, we are, um, and, um, and these patches will go through the CI CD workflow of Software Factory before being, uh, in order to be validated, merged, and applied inside Software Factory. So now uh, we are going to show you a um, concrete example of uh, Software Factory usage, and I will uh, give the talk to Mathieu. Thank you, Fabien. So yes, let's see how we can implement a CI workflow uh, inside of Software Factory. Uh, OpenStack style CI workflow. Let's first connect to the dashboard of uh, Software Factory. So uh, as you can see, it gives you a general view of uh, what's going on in Software Factory. As Fabien mentioned before, There's a top menu that allows you to access all the services that are packaged uh, within Software Factory. You can also see the state of the tests that are currently running, in which pipelines and for which projects. You have also a list of the projects that uh, you have access to. And you can see uh, at a glance uh, the state of the reviews on it, if there are any open reviews on it, and if there are any open bugs as well. So let's create a project. Uh, all, uh, all of the things I am showing now can be done from the command line, by the way. Uh, but this is less uh, visual, so we took some uh, screenshots from the website. But all of this, all of this can be done with a, with a command line uh, interface. So creating a new project is uh, very straightforward. There's nothing uh, too uh, magical about it. The, the thing that we should mention is the fact that you can declare a project as being private, meaning that only a few selected people will be able to, comp uh, to contribute to it. And also you can import uh, an upstream repository to populate your project. Now that you have a project, you're going to want to add users to it to work on it. So pretty straightforward as well. You have a list of users uh, that uh, use Software Factory. And you can see here that you can define the roles that they are going to have within the project. Uh, since we are implementing an OpenStack style uh, uh, CI workflow, we also uh, mimicked uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, voc the vocabulary that is used by, uh, uh, by uh, OpenStack meaning that the PTL project uh, technical leader is actually an admin for a project. Core developers are the ones that uh, are going to be able to approve a patch to, uh, make it, uh, to, to merge it eventually in the, in the project. And developers are the people who, can, uh, who are allowed to, uh, to, uh, commit, uh, to submit code to the, to the code base. Once you have, you have users, in order to start working, you're going to want to... Thank you you're going to, uh, to want to set up the, test uh, the testing environment. So we're going to start with setting up the slaves through node pool. It, uh, it is done in two steps. First, you have to, de uh, to define the image you're going to use for, uh, to, to run your tests. So it's pretty easy. Actually, uh, all, the config, uh, all the configuration is done in a, in a deriva derivation of the YAML language. So it's uh, very uh, human readable. It's really easy to maintain. And basically, defining a slave is as easy as that. There are only a few lines. You only need to name your, uh, your uh, image, obviously, uh, the, the slave you're going to use, uh, the, the base image you're going to deploy, uh, the private key you're going to use with Jenkins to uh, manage the slave, and also, if you want, you can uh, um, uh, terminate, uh, well, uh, finish the installation and the setup of the slave with a, custom, uh, a customized uh, script. Once you have defined uh, your slave this way, all that is left to do is to declare it as a label in the configuration, So you can actually mention it in the, job, uh, the jobs definition later on. So this one is going to be called the uh, bear CentOS 7. We've done that. So now we can define jobs for our, for our project. We're going to do just that. Uh, again, it is, um, we use uh, the template language called the Jenkins uh, Job Builder, which is a derivation of uh, YAML. And it's very straightforward as well. You just give a name to your job. You uh, specify what you want to run during this job. So if you have already automation on your, uh, on your uh, project, 
you ju will just uh, call the automated script to run the tests on it. And uh, finally, when the job is run, uh, any artifact that uh, this job is going to, uh, to generate can be published with uh, the use of other uh, scripts. So in this, in this case, we're going to use fetch my artifact and Zool Swift upload, which are defined but not shown here. And also you can see that this job is going to be run on the node we defined before, the BERS and OS 7. The last step to configure your job is to add it to the pipeline in Zool. So again, it's super easy. You have the name of the project and the pipelines that uh, are used by this project. In that case, we have only two pipelines, the check and the gate pipeline. So as we said, the check pipeline is the one that defines the tests that are going to be run as soon as the patch is submitted or, or modified. And the gate pipeline is the one where the, uh, defining the tests that are going to be run on the patch when it's about to be merged. So you can see that those uh, pipelines are in, uh, independent from each other. You can define anything you want. We are adding it to the two pipelines uh, in, th in that case. <coughs> cool, so we have uh, a test environment. Now we can start working. To start working, we have to uh, track our issues and uh, list our uh, uh, user stories. For that, we use Redmine as an issue tracking system. And uh, while well it's pretty straightforward, uh, you know, uh, uh, issue tracking is uh, pretty much the same everywhere. In that case, you can see the master backlog of the projects of a factory. So uh, how it lists uh, 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 tasks to do for a sprint. Ah, sorry. Uh, so as a developer, I'm going to assign myself a task. I'm going to start coding on it, do a patch, and submit it to the code review. So here's what it's going to look for a core reviewer. So for example, Fabien is going to check out my, uh, uh, what I've done. So you can see the commit message. People who have been uh, working with uh, OpenStack are familiar with that. You can see uh, the, the files that are impacted. Also very important, you can see the feedback from other developers, from other core developers, and the, uh, the scores given by the, the automated test feedback. Then you can see the modifications that are uh, going to be done by the patch. You can see that this patch is at its ninth iteration. It's been modified nine times. It's still not enough. There's still something to correct. So Fabian is going to comment on, uh, on a part that he doesn't like. And when he's done, he's going to give me a score. So minus one because he doesn't understand my, uh, the magic of my coding. So while this happens, <coughs> Zool is a uh, task with parallelizing the jobs and uh, managing uh, all the pipelines. So this, uh, uh, this screenshot comes from um, uh, the OpenStack instance of Zool. And you can see that uh, there are many jobs that are run in parallel in uh, many pipelines. So you can see the check pipelines that we mentioned, the gate pipelines, the gate pipeline, sorry, and the post pipeline that we uh, mentioned uh, quickly, but it's the one that, is, uh, that uh, launches jobs once a patch is merged. You can see also uh, very quickly when a patch, uh, when a test is going to fail, well, a set of, of tests is going to fail because it's uh, shown in, in red. Uh, the green ones are the ones that are working and uh, going, uh, going well. You can also see the dependencies between the patches. It is very important, but uh, this is out of the scope of this presentation. And if you want to know more about Zool, which is quite a beast and uh, very interesting to know how it works, uh, I advise you to read uh, Fabien's uh, blog post on uh, the RDO's uh, blog. About It's called a Deep Dive into, the, into Zool, and it's really uh, interesting. It's uh, it got a lot of... Uh, documentation about uh, the, the inner workings of uh, Zool. So once the tests are run, uh, you want to check the output to see, uh, well, first, if it worked, and if not, where, where it uh, didn't work. So there are two types of uh, output in Software Factory. There's a classic uh, job output uh, when it's run that is uh, shown in Jenkins. You're probably very familiar with that because Jenkins is uh, pretty much an industry standard. But also, as we said, we can uh, upload uh, artifacts, any kinds of artifacts, uh, to, uh, to an object storage, like Swift. And in this example, you can see uh, the artifacts that are sent after a test that is run on Software Factory. And what uh, the artifacts that we decide to send are actually the logs of every service that is running on the Software Factory image. So it is a very invaluable tool for uh, debugging, because when you have a problem, you can just check anything that way. Those logs, you don't have access to them through Jenkins because you only have the logs from the job. So we've been doing CI so far. It's been pretty good. Now we want to push it a little more and do some uh, continuous delivery. While with Zool, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is define a new job that will be uh, 
uh, uploading the new version of the code to a production server and then run a deploy script. The thing is, uh, to connect to this uh, server, you need to authenticate yourself. So it will be uh, pretty much inadequate to have your key in the clear in your job. So in order not to do that, we use uh, the credential binding uh, plugin in Jenkins, as we mentioned before, which allows you to, uh, to access a secret in a secure way. Once your job is defined, uh, just like we did uh, the last time, uh, you just have to add it to the pipeline post and it's going to be run after a merge. So that's it. Um, as you can see, doing CI in a better way uh, in the OpenStack style is pretty easy with Software Factory. So uh, we hope we you're going to uh, give it a try. You can contact us on uh, Freenode and the mailing list, and of course, check it out on, uh, on its website, softwarefactory-project.io. And if there are any questions, we're going to take it now. Yes. Great, thank you. Great presentation. Uh, in the initial traditional model, uh, you mentioned that it takes about 30 minutes or so to run through your patch to deploy. I wonder if you had kind of similar data on your software factory model, like how long it takes for your patch to go through the process and deploy. For the standard model we shown at the beginning, yeah, at the beginning of the presentation. I think like there was one slide that said like, oh, it takes about 30 minutes. No, no, for no. The in fact, this is um, uh, the job that run in um, in order to test open stacks in OpenStack. So uh, in um, in Zool, in uh, the the instance of uh, uh, Zool uh, deployed by OpenStack, some jobs will uh, will um, will take more than 30 minutes to run. So. So that's why we mentioned that, just to show that uh, in, uh, in, software in, um, in OpenStack, uh, some jobs are really long to run, and there is a lot of jo job to run. So this is a, a huge amount of work for the CI. Uh, so this was in order to introduce the feature of Zool, but maybe that you want to say more about that. Not really, but uh, I, what I can add is that uh, the combo Zool plus not pool really helps you with parallelizing stuff because uh, you can run, as Fabian said before, you can run as many jobs in parallel as, as, uh, as VMs that you can run on an OpenStack cloud. So that's uh, really much your, the tenant is uh, the limit. And uh, so that's pretty, that's pretty cool. You, you won't be able to reduce uh, the time of your test. If, if your tests are pretty long, well, that's, uh, that's your problem. We can do that, <laughs> we can do anything for that. But uh, you, you can run them in parallel, so it's, uh, you gain some time. So how pluggable is the architecture? If I want to swap out uh, Garrett for GitHub and I don't want to run on OpenStack Cloud, I want to run on Amazon. So actually, um, all the architecture uh, turn around Garrett. So in order to move out Garrett and use uh, GitHub, uh, it won't be possible, uh, uh, actually. And uh, to run Software Factory um, on another cloud platform, actually, it is possible. But some component uh, like NodePool uh, won't be able to start to spawn virtual machine on uh, Amazon. So, for your slave, you will be able, you you need to use an OpenStack cloud. But uh, maybe in the future, I don't know. Uh, uh, the fact is, we use uh, tools uh, developed by the OpenStack community for the need of the OpenStack community. So this is difficult to use them on uh, another platform. On the other hand, uh, we have uh, uh, in the roadmap we plan to uh, make it mo to make software factory more modular because we don't really like uh, Redmine and uh, we'd like to use uh, to be able to use other uh, uh, ticket uh, ticketing system, especially since it's also um, uh, uh, a blocker for some for, for some teams. You know, some some teams already have uh, an issue tracking system and they say no, we don't want to m to migrate, uh, so we're, we're just going to do uh, our own way even if it's uh, not as good. And so we'd like to have uh, the possibility to use any uh, ticketing system and also add uh, other modules to the, to the system. Um, so if, um, if I have a means to, if I'm using Ansible or Puppet or Chef to configure my, my actual application, all of my server stack, um, how do I plug that? At? If I have you know, my code, I wait means to reproduce my environment and some automated tests. Have you got documentation about how to plug all this into uh, 
Okay, so all the job you will need to, to run in order to reproduce your environment um, can be uh, included in the node pool image you will create, you need to create. So uh, with node pool you can um, say uh, I want to use a base image like uh, the CentOS cloud base image and uh, after you can specify a script so you will uh, you, you have to write a script that will define okay i need to install ansible i need to ins define some stuff in the image and after uh, node pool uh, will take a, a snapshot of the image it will create uh, based on the base image plus the script you provide and after it will uh, use this image to spawn vm and run your job in it so uh, um, so I don't know, maybe it, res it responds to your question or no? Not really. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, so uh, I really like it. I just have a question about the, the entire workflow. So one of the things I really like about GitHub is the ability to create uh, issues or tracks or uh, tasks, take those tasks, create some code, then take um, uh, a, a pull request, attach it to the task, and then have Travis automatically kick in the test and provide feedback. So the, all the entire workflow can be seen from the issues. And so what I'm wondering is Software Factory, does it, once as um, a Garrett uh, patch was moving through the workflows, are those workflows fed back into Redmine and given, like, so you can go to one place at one, uh, uh, you can see the, the, the workflow flow through? Is that possible? Y y yes, absolutely. Uh, if you, um, uh, if you, uh, w when you have the, the ID of a ticket you define in um, in uh, in Redmine, you can uh, put this ID in the commit message of a patch, and uh, the the state of the ticket will react uh, according to uh, the life of the of the patch in Gerrit, and also Gerrit will post uh, information into the ticket as comment. So maybe it mimic a bit the workflow you, you described. Perfect, thank you very much. Um, what's, ne what's next on the roadmap? Is there anything like uh, ELK stack, like uh, the CI Infra team has, or what other things are coming up for, some, uh, for a software factory? Um, like Matthew said, uh, this is a customization. Uh, we will for now, we have a stat static component in a software factory. So we want to provide to the users a way to, uh, a way to uh, specify, okay, instead of Redmine, I want uh, Taiga, for instance. Um, and um, at for now, that's pretty much it. Uh, we, we really need to have feedback from, uh, from users about what they want, and, uh, and after we can adapt our workflow. Well, personally, I'd like to see more uh, uh, authentication schemes and protocols supported in CIOs. By the way, CIOs is, is a standalone project that uh, you can check out as well. It, uh, it's uh, helpful to uh, unify authentication amongst uh, several services. And uh, right now, it's, uh, it's supporting only, uh, well, only, it's supporting uh, GitHub authentication through uh, OAuth, also uh, Launchpad authentication. But I think that uh, uh, to get more uh, uh, entries in the, the uh, industry world, we should support uh, industry standards like uh, SAML and uh, Kerberos that we are missing right now. But uh, I'd like to work on that afterwards. And I'd like to know, is Software Factory the free software? Uh, well, why don't you answer that? Because <laughs> Tristan is actually uh, one member of the team. Well, it's a free software, so uh, it's like a community driven. So, so far the community is pretty small, but uh, if there are needs to be addressed, like a feature like ILK, like you mentioned from the OpenStack Infra, it's, uh, it's something to add on. So. And, uh, yeah. and it's worth mentioning that uh, in order to develop Software Factory, we use Software Factory. So this is a, a good point because uh, this is uh, the workflow, uh, this is a good workflow because uh, it helps us to, to keep it uh, stable on the master branch. So do you have any other question? OK. <laughs> and so what do I actually need to run it? How many? I need an instance. I need one VM. I need. To deploy software factory? OK. Uh, so to deploy software factory, um, in fact, at each release, we create uh, a pre-built image of software factory with all components including it. 
So you just have to upload this image in Glance, if you use OpenStack, start a VM based on this image, and uh, after uh, you log in the image, in the virtual machine using SSH, and you start uh, the deployment script. And we have same default configuration, so you can, uh, as soon as the script is finished, you can connect on, uh, using your browser on the UI on Software Factory. So this is really easy and it takes, uh, I don't know, maybe 15, mini 15 minutes. So, so yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I think this is enough because uh, all the, um, the load is generally on the slave and you, and you may have to configure additional uh, node via node pool, I guess, uh, to, to manage uh, all those jobs. So on the main node, you don't have so much uh, load. So. Um, if there are some tests that is related to hardware, like uh, the storage driver, uh, is the node pool can handle this? Um, I'm not really sure. So this is uh, maybe a complex use case we don't use for uh, for our um, our needs, so um, I don't really know uh, if this is possible. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so all these systems, they must have some state, like get rid all the 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 review, the codes, the uh, other job Jenkins. They, they stay on that machine? Yes, absolutely. Okay, is there a default configuration that we can move this out so that if that machine fall, we don't lose everything? Okay, so uh, first, uh, yes, there is a, a, ba a backup system, backup raptor system. So, uh, okay. so you can configure a regular backup and push on a Swift. So if your node crash, uh, you can uh, spawn another one just re restore the configuration and you and it will uh, it will work so uh. Thank you. so that's it okay so thank you everybody thank you.